Will Keyshawn George compliment or eventually replace Corey Kisberg? We're going to talk about that and more next on Locked On Wizards. You are Locked On Wizards, your daily Washington Wizards podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Scott again, and I appreciate you guys making Locked On Wizards your first listen every single day. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. And tonight's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NBA. For $20 off your first purchase, terms apply. All right, tonight we're going to talk about Keyshawn George. Yes, the number 24th overall pick in this year's NBA draft for the Washington Wizards. Will he be a nice compliment on the second unit with Corey Kispert, or will he eventually replace Corey Kispert? Man, really, really important question, especially with the fact that Corey Kispert is an aspiring contract this year, and he is slated um, to be signed to a rookie extension. But like I said, could could he work in tandem with Keyshawn Jordan's second unit? Yes, but could he also be a trade asset going forward? That could also be true. So we're going to look at how Keyshawn George and Corey Kisper can coexist on the second unit, and we're going to look at some trade packages if the Wizards indeed want to move on from Corey Kisper at some point this season or beyond, and we're going to look at some important dates for training camp and media day because it's right around the corner this week coming up. Um, so things are starting to kick off for the regular season for the Washington Wizards. So let's get into the first uh, concept for the night. Keyshawn George. Can he, can he compliment Corey Kispert or will he eventually replace Corey Kispert? And like I said, um, looking at Corey Kispert, he is an expiring contract this season for the Washington Wizards. Uh, right now, um, he is under a team option. So right now we're, look, we're uh, waiting to see if the Washington Wizards will pick up not only Corey Kispert's team option but uh johnny davis and patrick baldwin jr all three young players are up uh for their team options to be enacted or not enacted and in that case they will be free agents so um looking at the wizards roster obviously we are plus one we need to uh, get rid of one player off the roster and to me the two names that really pop up are patrick baldwin jr and johnny davis really you can say johnny davis has the nod to be the odd man out you know he's going into his third year and you know being the 10th overall pick you know the jury's out <laughs> whether he could be a you know an asset for this team or is he on his way out but again looking at the the salary cap situation we are now waiting on the Washington Wizards to enact the team option on Corey Kisper but what what is his long-term fit here in DC and I, I for one I'm, you know you guys know how I feel I think that you definitely retain his services because you know if you look at Corey Kisper I mean, he could definitely play some basketball, man. I mean, you know, he fits the mold of being a sniper on the second unit for the Wizards. And, you know, every team needs a sniper. And I think that if you look at potential fit with him and Keyshawn George, I think they could complement each other a lot more than they would conflict with each other. So let's take a look at Corey Kisper's stat line real quick. Now, he is going to this fourth season, obviously, uh, his fourth and um, fourth year of his rookie contract. Now, looking at his, uh, his previous season, he did play 80 games starting 22 a games, averaging around 25.8 minutes per game, shooting 48% from the field, 38% from three-point, 72% from free throw, 2.8 rebounds, two assists, and he scored, or averaged rather, 13.4 points per game. Now, it was a career high up to this point. Now, certain areas of the game, he did regress to a certain point. Uh, free throw line, a.k.a. the charity strike, uh, his percentage went down to 72 from 85 the previous season, so you know, with him being a shooter, definitely want to see him uh, get a better percentage with his free throws, man. Um, and definitely with his ability to slash the basket, drive to the basket. You know, the fact that he has high basketball IQ are reasons why he'll definitely get looks at the charity strike. So you definitely, definitely expect him to have better numbers at the charity strike. But like I said, if you look at his numbers, he's been solid. And he's been consistent every year. He's gotten better every year. I mean, free throw, um, field goal percentage, 45, 49, 48. So he's been around right around 45 to 48 uh, percent uh three-point percentage he's, he's shooting above league average every year our uh, league average was 35 percent, so he went from 35 to 42 to 38 so he's been consistent every year and like i said i'm definitely in the camp of retaining Corey kisper i think that you keep a, a player like Corey kisper a guy who could be that microwave score off the second unit 
a guy who, you know, again, high basketball IQ coming out of Gonzaga. He's definitely a sniper. If you look at his three-point percentage, he's a guy who's it's been a consistent source of three-point for the Washington Wizards. So he's, he's definitely been very, very consistent in that area. And then you look at his ability to slash the basket and, and move around without the ball, his ability to drive the basket. And now, we, you know, he's definitely showed a lot of progress, not only in ball handling, but also in, you know, getting other people involved. So, you know, and especially on defensive end. You know, that's one area that a lot of people want to see improvement from Corey Kisper. And he's shown a lot more effort, a lot more energy on the defensive side of the ball. And that's, that's definitely um, accolades that a couple of his teammates have actually given him that they've seen a lot more effort from them on the defensive end. So, you know, I'm definitely in favor of the Wizards retaining Corey Kisper, signing him to a very team friendly uh, rookie extension and keeping him around because, you know, if you look at his age, man, I mean, obviously he still fits the mold. Um, he is 25 years old. So, you know, again, we talk a lot about the timeline, but looking at these uh, three guys we have on the roster around 25 years old in Jordan Poole, Sadiq Bay, and now uh, Corey Kisper, yes, they're 25 and, and they're subsequently older than the five draft picks under Will Dawkins. But, you know, they are going to be those next vets coming up. Once we move on from Conquism, once we move on from Jonas Valanciunas, Malcolm Brogdon, um, we're going to need guys with some veteran presence. And Jordan Poole fits that mold. Corey Kisper fits that mold. You know what I mean? So, and Sadiq Bay fits that mold. So, I think all three gentlemen, yes, are 25. Yes, they will be hidden. They'll be going into the prime. Right around the time the Wizards start to be competitive, which I think is another, you know, plus. You know, you got guys who have, it will be the next – veterans to step up and be those leaders in Corey Kispert and Jordan Poole. And you have guys who are going to be entering their prime right around the time these young guys are already are developed and ready to roll, man. So I think it's a win-win for the Washington Wizards. Now, can he compliment or can he be complimented by Keyshawn George and, or will he eventually be replaced by Keyshawn George? And that, you know, like I said, that, that is a very important question right now. All right. Cause we're going to pull up Keyshawn George's, um, scouting report real quick but Keyshawn george is you know very you know, i'm not gonna see the same type of player as Corey kisper but very similar in his shooting ability which was his big attribute coming out of the draft so real quick bear with me real quick while i pop it up so looking at Keyshawn george real quick um and obviously we covered this when i was doing uh content for the draft but the biggest attribute that Keyshawn george brings to watch the wizards is his ability to shoot now obviously his height and other, you know, abilities that he's definitely going to progress in. But the biggest thing was his shooting ability. You know, he is definitely, definitely a sniper. And I definitely think that, yes, both both answers can be true in this in this, this scenario, right? Can he compliment uh, Corey Kispert? Yes. You know, if you look at the second unit, you know, year one, you're looking at Buff Carrington being the point guard, Jared Butler, uh, or the point guard of the second unit, and Jared Butler being third in the depth chart at point guard, right? But a two guard and small forward, you're looking at Corey Kispert and possibly Keyshawn George being that one two punch as far as a scoring tandem on the second unit. Because Johnny Davis, in my opinion, I just don't see where he fits it in the future. Now, could they retain him? Yes. But again, if you, if you put in the competition between Patrick Baldwin Jr. and Johnny Davis, and who is the most, I guess, I'm not going to say lucky if you're going to get released, but who deserves to be released more? You got to say Johnny Davis. He just hasn't lived up to his draft position of being 10th overall. And Patrick Baldwin Jr., yes, his MO has been three-point shooter, and his three-point shot has not been the best part of his game. But I think he's shown a little more as far as what he can contribute to the Washington Wizards than Johnny Davis has. So if you're looking at this, uh, the two-guard and the small forward on the second unit, to me, Corey Kispert and Keyshawn George are the guys you need to plug in there. And obviously, you're looking to go into the four. Um, depending on certain matchups, you could be looking at Marvin Beckham III or Patrick Baldwin Jr. And then obviously, you know, Rashawn Holmes is going to hold it down and Tristan Vucevic behind him so to me i think that Keyshawn george can compliment Corey kispert and not to say that they couldn't go the denny route right sign to a team friendly deal and then eventually move on from him because again you know will dawkins is putting his own stamp on, on this roster you know he moved on from uh denny avia johnny davis might be on his way out you know Rui was already traded before um will dawkins took the job but you're seeing more and more you know the tommy shepherd picks are being traded and they're getting assets back from, you know, looking at Denny, they're able to get a couple of first round picks and other assets back, you know, including Malcolm Brogdon. So, I mean, they could go that route, but to me, I'd like to see Corey Kispert stick around. Cause I think we, we definitely need that sniper off the bench. We definitely need a guy who can, you know, spot start if needed, a guy who can start if needed, but is best served being that six man 
or that scoring punch off the bench. And then again, I think he could definitely compliment or be complimented by Keyshawn George because they're both, you know, you need shooters. You know, you don't want to be confined to just one shooter. And I think that both of these guys could be a great source of points and three-point shooting off the bench for the Washington Wizards. But look, what if the Washington Wizards do decide to move on from Corey Kispert? We're going to get into some trade destinations and fits. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Now, you guys know me. I go to games all the time. And I have I'm familiar with all the ticket ads, but to me, Game Time is my go-to and the best one out of them. And there's three reasons why. Well, number one, Game Time Picks. Creation makes it easier to save more on sports events, but not only sports tickets, right? Concerts, comedy shows, theater events, etc. What else? Seat views. Get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy so you're not sitting behind some kind of pillar or losing money on your seat. Last, Game Time Ticket Coverage. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Look, take the guess we've got to buy MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off your first purchase. In terms apply. And again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NBA. L O C K E D O N NBA for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Thank you for making Locked On Wizards your first listen of the day. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On NBA podcast. There is no offseason in the NBA, and Locked On NBA provides daily basketball analysis from national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Locked On NBA, available on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Let's get back into it, everybody. Now, like I said, I am definitely in favor of the Washington Wizards holding on to Corey Kispert and letting him be that sniper, letting him be that scoring punch off the second unit. And, I, and again, I think that him and Keyshawn George could definitely complement each other. And I don't see, I mean, you know, could Keyshawn George necessarily be his replacement? Yeah. So we're going to get into that. What if the Washington Wizards do decide to move on from Corey Kispert? Even though I'm a favorite keep him, and even though I think he can work in tandem and being a one-two punch, scoring punch off the bench with Keyshawn George, but could he be the replacement? Absolutely. So we're going to look at uh, five destinations that could really fit not only the Wizards, but Corey Kispert and where he can fit best on a contending team. So let's get into it, everybody. Uh, they, there we go. All right, number one, the, the team that needs help every single year, the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, we know that the Lakers need shooting around LeBron and AD. You know, Corey Kispert could fit that mode. Like I said, they could definitely, um, if they decide to move on from Corey Kispert, I see them doing the Denny route, which is, Signing to a really, really team-friendly deal. Because if you look at Denny's contract, it was probably the most team-friendly contract in the NBA. So sign him to a team-friendly deal and then, you know, send him to a contending team where, you know, kind of like Kyle Kuzma, where, you know, his contract is not only team-friendly to the Wizards, where, you know, he's not going to break the bank for them to, to keep him the roster, and he can be that source of mentorship and points. But also, other teams don't have to break the bank to acquire him to add a scoring punch going into the playoffs push so you know look at the Corey Kispert he could definitely definitely eat in LA and be that sniper for um JJ Reddick and the LA Lakers all right number two the Milwaukee Bucks obviously they they lost Malik Beasley in free agency they need that guy to come in um and you say the same thing about Gary Trent Jr they could definitely definitely you know definitely use some extra shooting on the roster uh, because we know Giannis ain't that sniper there so Corey Kispert could fit well in Milwaukee because like I said, um, they kind of like L.A. and LeBron and A.D., uh, y'all said uh, Anthony DeCoupo needs shooters around him, man. Uh, so I think that he could definitely, definitely be a really good player in Milwaukee for the Bucks. And uh, and before we move on, I'm looking at the pick situations. Um, you know, the Lakers can't offer a first-rounder. Now, could we get a first-rounder for Corey Kispert? I definitely think we could definitely get a first-rounder for Corey Kispert. Um, now, two ain't going to happen. You know, you're not going to get the Kyle Kuzma asking price core Kisper, but excuse me but i think you definitely asked for a first rounder now what could you realistically expect probably a first rounder uh and a young player but you know Corey kisper his value is not gonna be up there with a kyle kuzma or jordan Poole, um because he's more of a specialist you know three-point specialist a sniper and a high basketball iq mind man like i said his his, his brain is three-point shooting or you know, the parts of his games man it, it's, it's the money part of his game so um and not to say, you know, take anything from Corey Kisper, man, because, you know, he's definitely a 
asset for the Wizards, and he would definitely be an asset for a team that needs that scoring punch off the second unit. Um, so number three, the Denver Nuggets. Look, they're trying to make another run, man. So they could definitely use another shooter. Um, and like I said, they they have history of picking up these guys, these shooters. Uh, Bruce Brown's a guy, uh, KCP, you know, coming over on the Monte Morris trade uh, with the Wizards, man. KCP was this guy. So they they like to have shooters around um, Murray and company. So I definitely see them as another really good fit, man. All right, number four, the Memphis Grizzlies, another team that needs some shooting around them. You know, and uh, number five, the Indiana Pacers, another team where, you know, um, they need, a, you know, a piece or two to really challenge in the Eastern Conference because, to me, they're around the sixth, fifth best team, maybe even lower because, you know, the East, you know, the East is getting better, but it's not quite up there with the Western Conference. But the Indiana Pacers are trying to make that move, man. So a shooter like Corey Kisper could definitely fit in. So, like I said, the three best destinations, man, and shout out to Wizard of Oz because uh, they, they came up with the list, man, and I agree with all of them. I uh, looked at every uh, roster situation, and I agree that you know the Lakers, the Bucks, the Denver Nuggets, the Memphis Grizzlies, and the NAM Pacers are all great fits for the um, Corey Kispert and any potential move. Like I said, I'm definitely in favor in them retaining Corey Kispert, and I think that you know I would definitely fit him and Keyshawn George as a one-two punch, scoring punch off the second unit, and that's just me. I think both of them are shooters. I think both of them have shown they can score at a high level, and I think that the Wizards need it long term. And, you know, look at Keyshawn George. He fits the timeline. Look at that Corey Kispert. You need that vet. You know, he's, he's you, you know, he's a vet now. So you're going to need those vets. You're going to need, you know, and I think the Jordan Poole, Corey Kisper, a couple of guys that you retain them, not only for what he can do on the court, but for leadership, man. You know, we need some leaders going to, because eventually they're going to go, they're going to begin a youth movement. You know, Kyle Kuzma is going to be traded at some point. You know, Michael Barkley is going to be gone by the deadline. You know, the Donald Trump is going to be gone by the deadline. We'll see about Sadiq Bey. Um, so what, at some point it's going to be a youth movement. And these young guys, you know, slowly but surely going to start to take over. You know, Blau going to year two. Alex R. Bob Carrington, we're going to, you know, definitely um, see what they can do this year. But like I said, you know, eventually you're going to have a youth movement. But you still need leadership. And I think that Jordan Poole and Corey Kispert, right now, they're 25. They're a couple years away from the prime. They will be in their prime by the time this time this team is ready to contend. And you need – I think that both of them should definitely be considered long-term pieces here in D.C. So – all right, everybody, we're going to get into some important dates with Media Day and Training Camp because they're coming up. They are, we are a week away from Training Camp and Media Day, so we're going to get into that. But before we do, tonight's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. It's that easy, everybody. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets, guaranteed, when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Thank you again for making Locked on Wizards your first listen today, everybody. Now, for your second listen, please go find Locked on NBA, where the local experts keep you updated daily on all the biggest storylines ahead of the season. Find Locked on NBA on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. All right, everybody, we're going to go over some important dates and and times, and then I'm going to give you an itinerary of what to expect because, like I said, things are ramping up. Um, we are a week away from October, so, you know, training camp starts. Media day or media day kicks off training camp, training camp preseason. Then at the end of the month, the regular season starts. So, like I said, we are ramping up. It's that time of the year. So let's get into some important things real quick, and then I'm going to give you an itinerary of what to expect because um, we, we're going to have some good content coming up this week. All right, so media day will be starting on September 30th. I will be down there to talk to the players and um, the execs or the coaching staff, whoever it is made available for the media. I will be down there to definitely get some content and let you guys know truly what is the vision going forward for the Washington Wizards. So, again, media day is September 30th, which is going to be the Monday coming up. It's that time. I'm trying to tell you. all All right. So practices will begin on October 1st up to the first preseason game against the Toronto Raptors, October 6th. Now, training camp will be – at the MedStar Health Performance Center. Um, I will be down there Thursday and on Monday. So they would that would be the location of training camp. All right, so looking at media day, again, uh, September 30th will be media day. So, uh, again, I will be down there covering the team for you guys. Uh, some other days, so uh, real quick, the preseason. Uh, first preseason game will be at Toronto against Raptors October 6th, October 9th at Madison Square Garden in New York City against the New York Knicks. October 11th at home against the Toronto Raptors, October 14th at Brooklyn against the Nets, and October 18th at home 
versus the New York Knickerbockers. All right, so let's real quick let's look at a few things. I think that is it for the date. So yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, training camp is coming up, man. We are a week away. Uh, media day will be on Monday. So again, I will be down there. So that night, uh, you, Matthew, I'm gonna put the poll out. If you guys want to go live, we can go live. Um, so, but like I said, I will be covering media day. So we're gonna try to get a lot of good content and let you guys what's going on with the team and what to look forward to and expect this season with your beloved Washington Wizards. Now, Thursday, I will be down there to talk to general manager Will Dawkins. So like I said, um, I'm definitely going to get a lot of good information from general manager Will Dawkins. You guys know, man, I'm a problem with some good questions, man. And definitely, definitely figure out what is the timeline, right? What is the vision going forward with, you know, um, certain situations like point guard. So like I said, I'm definitely looking forward to Thursday and talking to general manager Will Dawkins and trying to get some good content and let you guys know, again, what to expect. And like I said, and a lot of questions I'm going to be looking at, man, is really looking at point guard. You know, what is, what is the vision at point guard? Is Jordan Poole the guy at one? You know, is 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 the eventual backcourt of Jordan Poole and Bob Carrington the vision? Um, and, you know, and if you look at all five draft picks, is that the timeline? Or does Jordan Poole, Sadiq Bey have a place here long term? And Corey Kisper have a place here long term in D.C.? So, like I said, Looking forward to chatting it up and chopping it up with general manager Will Dawkins on Thursday. So, all right, everybody. Um, I will see you guys tomorrow night. A lot, lot to talk about tonight. So, definitely get in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think and let me know how I did. So, I will see you guys tomorrow night. Everybody have a good evening. Hail to the Wizards. And peace. See you guys next time.